you everybody for coming. Uh, I really appreciate your presence here this evening and tonight I get to share with you some research from my dissertation. Uh, I'm representing three organisations this evening. First and foremost, I'm representing the London School of Business and Finance, whom I completed my MBA with, with a major in management consulting. Uh, second of all, I'm a board member of the SA chapter for the Institute of Management Consultants, so representing them through this research, and it was research that was supported from the get-go by the Institute. Uh, and then third, obviously, representing the company that I work for, JLB Management Consulting. Uh, so uh, I've got three people watching my uh, every move this evening. So thank you. Um, I'd like to start off with a few acknowledgements and I'll move through quite quickly. Uh, I ultimately wanted to uh, just start by giving you a non-academic summary of what this is about. I'm very passionate about the industry and I wanted to use my dissertation to find some real information. How is my industry making its money? How's it going to make its money and how are things changing? I'll give you the academic summary of what that looks like as we walk through a dissertation research paper, uh, but ultimately wanted to contribute to the body of knowledge and give management consultants something that they could look at where we are, where we've come from and where we're going. Because like many industries, things are in a really big state of flux at the moment and if you're not on top of that, then your business is likely to go the way of the dinosaurs. So a few acknowledgements for the paper itself. I'd like to thank God. Second, my university supervisor, Dr. Peter Jansen, who gave me a lot of support. I'm very lucky any academics in the room will know that your supervisor can make or break you. Uh, my mentor, Dr. Virgil Jean Summerall, who would have liked to have been here today. He's a professor at University of Canberra. Um, also, uh, the Institute of Management Consultants itself and the president of IMC Australia, Brennan Williams, for his personal support for the research. And also these brands here today in some way, shape or form contributed to the research. Uh, that may have been through being interviewed, through engaging in the surveys as part of the research and you'll see a number of organisations up there of, uh, of high calibre that were a part of this. So this reaches out to pretty much every major or medium sized player and some individual high calibre professionals in the management consulting industry here in South Australia. Um, I put this up here just as a, as a bit of a joke for MBAs. Um, what society thinks MBAs do, uh, what my former co-workers might think pre-MBA pre, pre graduation, what my friends think I do at work, uh, what my parents probably think I do, I'd like to try and convince them that I do, uh, what I think I do versus what management consultants really do. There's an Excel spreadsheet up there. That's just putting a bit of, uh, poking a bit of fun at MBA graduates. Um, Theoretical model, this is a good place to begin here uh, by starting off by what bodies of, of knowledge this reaches out to. Uh, and we're, we're actually touching two parts of knowledge here and that's business development, how businesses make their money and also management consulting as a, a science. So it's a very specific niche area but as you'll see when we go through this there may be indicators that this reaches out beyond management consulting. Um, another model is this one here where we look at commerce or business as a large body of knowledge within that business development sits and then business development specific to management consulting. So theoretical models that I designed just to describe where this research sits and it was an area where there's a lot of information on management consulting as a science, there's a lot of information on business development as a science but very little information on specific industry practice. Um, the scope, ultimately we had to determine who we would reach out to to look at this information when we we're gathering primary data, determine who's a management consultant who's not, and this is argued even between chapters in the IMC nationally, what constitutes a management consultant. If you ask me non-academically, I'd say that it constitutes two things, a professional that solves problems and adds value. That's how we would describe it day to day in our work but specifically we looked at the context of who isn't a management consultant for this research and we took out essentially anyone involved in accounting, finance, specifically just recruitment, those areas. We wanted to look at other areas such as sales coaching, market analyst, business coach, quality auditing, non-financial auditing, certification consulting and a range of other areas that tend around strategic and economic advisory. We did include um, sorry, with these areas, anyone that was in the former list 
if 51% or more of their work came from things like change management, sales coaching. Because there are hybrid consultants out there that come from an, a, an economics background or an accounting background, but they're also consulting in areas of change, such as Steelwell Consultant, who's represented here this evening by the general manager. They're engaged in recruitment heavily, but they're also heavily engaged in organisational development. It's an it's a extremely hybrid and specialist form of consulting. The research aim, uh, we wanted to look at the primary mediums and methods of business development for management consulting in Adelaide, South Australia. Why? Because I'm a, a, a proud citizen of South Australia. It's a great snapshot and a lot of industries or businesses will use South Australia as a snapshot for their project, their business. Um, if something can succeed in South Australia, it can succeed nationally, it's often said. Uh, the objectives, providing the analysis of the data, um, and as, as a byproduct of determining the industry averages, of determining how consultants are making their money or finding their clients or retaining their clients, we felt that there would be a lot of extra data that, that came out of this, and, and there is. Uh, and, and I'll share that with you as, uh, throughout the course of the evening. Uh, and those are some unexpected benefits that often come with research. Uh, anyone that's been in the room doing that kind of research, and I know there are, will find that additional information often just presents itself. Um, so the research questions, three of them. How do management consultants source their clients? Very, very simple. What are the mediums and methods that the consultants use to derive their business in the South Australian area? Again, we have to set a geographical boundary to be very specific. And then what are the qualitative and quantitative industry averages within the scope of Adelaide South Australia with respect to management consultants? So a lot of this data is perception based. And that's where we can start to pick apart data, but it is an industry that is highly perception based. Uh, it's hard to gather raw data out of, out of uh, consultants and their firms in terms of their financial spending on business development versus their return. Um, the undertaking for that would be so huge that I, I don't think any academic would want to, to even try. Uh, the plan structure, we research the current body of knowledge uh, sample questionnaire of approximately uh, 50 or management, 50 management consultants or more in South Australia, interviewing eight to 10 management consultants in the same area with the same kind of questioning to get in-depth knowledge, interpret the data, formulate the results, and develop some recommendations and conclusions that would be shared with the industry, uh, and then obviously formulate a paper and presentation for industry sharing. And you're all here at that final stage this evening. Uh, this is a bit of a snapshot from Ivis World. This was taken in 2017, hence why the, the prediction numbers there uh, look a little bit old. But at the time, these are the numbers in terms of billions of dollars US globally that the management consulting industry is worth. So we're talking some significant numbers. In, in 2016, uh, we were looking at 133 billion, and these prediction numbers are pretty spot on with where we are today in 2018, moving into 2019. And historically, management consulting just continues to grow and grow at a continuously steady pace. Uh, it's something that tends to even survive GFCs, it survives even wars uh, on averages because businesses ultimately in those times want expertise in order to survive difficult times. And, and that's what we do is we solve problems. Um, the theoretical framework, as, as I discussed, found some trends through the research. There's overall agreement that the industry is growing. There's an increased variety of services. The number of specialists out there continues to grow. Um, business development within management consulting concerns the attainment of new and ongoing work. Uh, so our work at JLB, we work with clients continuously, some that have been with us for, for decades now. Um, business development within the, the field tends to arrive, according to the literature, from direct marketing, uh, from traditional marketing and word of mouth, but things are changing. Management consulting is ultimately concerned with providing advice and assistance considered to be expert in its field that ultimately adds value in implementing strategic change for a business. And the literature suggests, although not conclusively, that word of mouth is the strongest form, and online marketing are the two strongest forms of marketing at this time. Um, I'll skip through to here. This is our, the other theoretical framework that was that's custom for this research, is understanding within management consulting, and I won't break this down because we'll go into another university lecture, but there are internal and external management consultants. Uh, those of us here from JLB this evening are considered external management consultants. 
We are from other firms that go into clients' businesses to help them. Internal management consultants often rest within one business as an internal employee to assist the ongoing change. And then within that, there are key areas of business development broken down. Some of the professionals in the room are probably starting to look and ask themselves, why aren't tenders up there? And that's the first question that, that I tend to get from people reviewing the research. And there was a deliberate reason why, after heavy consultation, that was removed. Uh, we'll get into that as we go through. Um, data collection methods, case study, survey, archival research, because business development actually goes back thousands of years. And part of the literature was examining uh, information pertaining to business records going back as far as 4000 BC, which we do have. Uh, a literature review, which obviously any academic conducting this research is going to do, and obviously interview. Um, our sampling size, as I said, 50 consultants for survey, 8 to 10 consultants for interview, that was the target. It was achieved with ultimately 53 consultants for survey and 8 consultants for interview. Um, how we found them, uh, my own network, uh, being in the industry assists in making sure that who we're interviewing and surveying are actually management consultants and we don't allow uh, people to corrupt the data by fall falling into the research. LinkedIn is actually a very good source and it was determined that it's highly unlikely that no one's going to set up a fake profile or, or, a, or call themselves a management consultant just to, just to mess with my research. So we consider this a good source. Phone contact out to the other consultants, particularly the big four and five out there, as well as the industry body referral, the IMC stepped in with its membership base to refer some of those consultants. Uh, and obviously we use SurveyMonkey, funny name, but a very good platform for, for research and then gaining that information from your, your surveys. Um, without reading this out to you, it's considered by the London School of Business and Finance that this research was conducted with a high level of credibility. Uh, it was supported and had a level of overwatch from the Institute of Management Consultants because ultimately I wanted to give my dissertation some life and make it real, something that we could use. Um, Survey questions, here's what we ask. So we get into the raw data now. What do we ask and what do we find out? So we, we get to the answers now. Are you an internal or external management consultant? Basically this came down to 80% are external, 20% are internal. Really simple statistics for some of these. Describe what area of management consulting you work in. And I should preface this by saying that uh, many professionals work in several areas. So I look around the room knowing some of the management consultants here, uh, and instantly I can see some that work in four, five, even more areas within their career. They may specialise in one in particular, but they may work across multiple fields. So out of that, the heavy hitters were management systems, uh, often leading towards certification, sales coach, business development coaching, uh, change management being a strong area, uh, and strategic advisory were the key areas that we saw. Some of the areas like logistic advice, uh, economic advisory from a management consulting perspective, non-financial, uh, were the, the low end speciality areas that didn't have too many areas, uh, too many consultants working in those areas. Do you currently work for one of the big four? So EY, PwC, Deloitte, KPMG. It'd be interesting the consultants in the room if they could predict this number break breakdown. And we were surprised in South Australia to find out it's actually a very small number. Um, they make up in terms of management consulting, not necessarily accounting, a fairly small number of the overall management consulting professional base. Uh, large brand, of course, but small physical number presence of, of people. Um, which methods do your, does your firm utilise to gain work? This is one of the most important questions. Again, multiple answers can be given to these questions by the professionals. And it's probably the most important graph, really, uh, one, of, one of two. So the big standout ones, word of mouth and referrals from other firms. And I'll break down why those two are actually separated, what that means, and then why they're actually put together in the research as we go through. And then online marketing. Um, I did mention networking there, um, networking being a very, very strong one there, including industry, industry body uh, association. So these are your standout four ones there, advertising and hard copy being very low, radio being very low, public speaking and sponsorship, um, some of them being virtually non-existent. Uh, 
these child break down, but again, I mentioned before tenders being removed here. It was determined in consultation with LSBF that tenders were a responsive, non-proactive process of gaining work and highly submission based. <coughs> so they weren't a, 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 what we considered to be a business development technique. They were responding to opportunity rather than attaining opportunity in the strictest sense. Four standout methods, as I said, word of mouth followed by referral. Interesting, those numbers are very closely linked because they are related, but they're not the same thing. Networking and online marketing being the, the, the next two in line. The difference between those two that I mentioned, referral marketing is proactive. It's about uh, finding that opportunity through your network versus word of mouth marketing. Instead of waiting for someone else to generate prospects for you, referral marketing demands that you take control of the process, including doing the referral work for and with your client. Hence that distinction there, why we wanted to explore the difference. Ultimately, they came out almost the same, meaning that they are highly related activities. Please rank in order of your professional experience the methods and mediums of marketing in terms of their effectiveness. So we took those top eight and we, we ranked them. We asked professionals to rank them in terms of their opinion of effectiveness. And this is what we got. Their opinion is that referrals from other firms, and we, we, at that point with the data, we, we placed referral and we placed uh, word of mouth together and close behind it is online marketing. That's the perception of management consultants in terms of the, re the ROI, the return on investment that they're getting out of their business development activities, their marketing activities, their bang for buck. Select the area of business development you believe to have the current highest growth factor. And this takes us from where are we now to where are we going as consultants in the industry. And this is the answer unequivocally online marketing being the highest, by far, perceived to be the, 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 the greatest growth factor followed by referral from firms. So we're at a stage now where consultants and consultant firms see that online marketing, and this is uh, shown in the literature, is overtaking and having a huge effect on how you find your clients. Um, word of mouth, again, linked in there, but ultimately related. Uh, networking events still having some presence, but no one saw that advertising, radio, sponsorship uh, had anything to do with the future of management consulting, business development. Um, we wanted to ask the question, do you feel that well-known brands like the big four or five, uh, we mentioned the big four, McKinsey being the big five edition, uh, has any standing on your ability or, or would they have an advantage in terms of business development? Uh, we found that nearly 75% of consultants agreed through their experience, having you know, tried to obtain work and probably been uh, defeated by the big four or won jobs against the big four at some stage, they felt that definitely it had an advantage and a small percentage, just over 10%, were unsure whether or not it did. Um, obviously, uh, pretty much the industry feels that those brands are effective and give them an edge. Does your, your firm advertise in print? Most said, no, we do not. And of those that did, these are the areas that they used. Uh, again, it was specifically outside of business cards and uh, sort of non-administrative, more marketing, brochures, flyers, newspapers. Um, predominantly, most consultants don't advertise anymore in this, this form, or very little. Does your firm, your firm use sponsorship? Uh, again, this is an area with uh, mostly no, but of those, these are the areas and very small percentages using these. So charity events seems to be the one that stands out or some billboards, um, but this is the percentages broken down by those few consultants that actually do use sponsorship as a form of advertising. Um, does your firm use public speaking as a form of gaining business and specifically not as recruitment, so going to universities to recruit for new interns or roles? is not, a, form, is not a, a medium of business development, but any other form of public speaking. Yes, they do. The big standouts being industry briefings and network groups uh, and seminars as well. So we see that at JLB where we're attending defence industry seminars a lot, and renewable energy sector uh, seminars a lot, to be able to publicly speak and present as to the work that we do and how we affect their industries. Does your firm use social media? This is a big topic for any industry at the moment. And the answer unequivocally is a yes, a strong yes, with predominance towards LinkedIn being the number one social media platform, in management consulting at least, followed by Facebook. 
with some use of Twitter and YouTube, obviously consultants will use more than one medium in many cases for this, uh, for this platform. Does your firm advertise outside of its own website or social media in terms of online marketing? Uh, a lot don't, but there's a predominance towards Google AdWords and business directories being a highly effective form of marketing as well, or a close second. Uh, when it says other firms there, we're not talking about competitors. So we're not talking about KPMG advertising on Deloitte's website. Uh, we're talking about referrals and partnership arrangements for advertising. Yahoo Search having some presence there as well. Please indicate your age, and this is where we get towards the end of the, the primary data collection. Uh, and we found out of those 53, um, what the average age was, um, predominance towards the 45 to 60 uh, age category, very few in over 60 or 61 and over, I should say, uh, and we only found four consultants with under the age of 30. Level of education, who are these consultants? How well are they educated? Uh, we found that none of them were limited to just primary, primary school education. There's probably no surprise there. It's a significant high level of, of work that is done by most management consultants. Um, small percentage being only secondary. Ultimately, the predominance is towards uh, university education of a bachelor uh, and with a, a huge predominance towards postgraduate education. Very, very small percentage being in the PhD or doctorate range there. Um, your gender. Uh, really easy breakdown. And this is just something that we find interesting in the industry because uh, the literature shows that historically this was a male-driven uh, industry, almost 100% for decades. Today we sit at uh, around about one in four are female management consultants working in the industry, so three out of four being male. So what does the average management consultant in South Australia look like? If I was to sum all of that up and to tell you what an, in, uh, uh, an industry consultant looks like, it would be a male, he'd be 46 years of age, He'd be university educated with either a bachelor or a master's degree typically, most likely be working in strategic advisory, management systems, business coaching, a combination of these generally. Uh, he'd be advertising online, he'd be using LinkedIn, Facebook, he'd be going outside of his own website, he may be attending networking events regularly or seminars, and of course a good management consultant is loving life with what they do. That's what the average management consultant in South Australia looks like today as it stands. Interviews. So summing this up, uh, we conducted interviews around those very similar questions, and interviews allow a slight level of flexibility to thresh out further information and see where things go, uh, to explore concepts. And we found uh, some trends that, that occurred. Referrals were strong, networking groups can be effective, online marketing is currently or is one of the most effective forms of marketing for a management consultant, or it's becoming the most important method for business development. Print media is not useful, radio advertising is ineffective. So this, uh, this here, uh, from the interviews, we found some outlying statements by one, of, one interview in particular, uh, that being a, bem a member of a board or industry body is a great way to make business, or that he, he believes that uh, print media outside of business cards and brochures is highly effective. Um, extremely outlying one-off cases of statements that came out of interviews. So the, the information from the surveys and the interviews, as you'll see here, has a high level of consistency. There's a lot of correlation between the two. Um, again, referrals and word of mouth being the strongest forms, and there's this belief that online marketing is having a strong effect on the industry and will continue to have a strong effect. Um, consistency between the survey and the literature, again, very high correlation between the current body of knowledge that we have, particularly if we, particularly if we look at peer-reviewed journals from the last 10 years, all, all can consistently agree that online marketing is extremely up and coming, likely to grow, and is having a significant effect on how management consultants find their clients, ergo, make their money. Consistency between interviews and literature, uh, not as high a correlation, but not far off either. So there's a significant amount of consistency in those statements, and it was really one interview, uh, a particular personality that, that had particular views on business development that trended away from, uh, from the average uh, management consultant. Uh, the, again, the most used and most effective mediums are online and word of mouth. So conclusions. 
what is, what is this lead us to if you're a management consultant in the industry, whether you're in South Australia or Australia at large? Uh, is that management consultants and their firm in general gain significant proportions of their clients from referral and word of mouth? Uh, that the, 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 they're using online marketing and that's continuing to grow. Um, the value of importance of, as, of online marketing continues to grow. Um, print media is dead for management consultants. That's the consensus. Uh, attendance at public speaking industry briefings is considered to be a strong and effective method. Uh, that management consultants in, in general agree that big brands have an effect on their ability to compete. So if you have a strong brand in, in the industry, it's considered to give you a competitive advantage. So what are my recommendations from this research? Uh, obviously that more research should be conducted, perhaps Australia-wide, to get further into the information, uh, to the breakdowns of different functions of management consultants. This opened up that there, there are so many management consultants out there conducting such specialist activities in and of itself invites further research, invites another paper or, or a group of academics to engage in that work. Um, that the, the primary body of knowledge um, gives these recommendations and that fur further research be conducted into the specific success rates and outcomes of online marketing and online business development. There's more research to be done there specific to management consulting as to what tiny methods and mediums, even websites, might be the most effective. Um, that management consultants should protect their existing client base. Word of mouth has been working for thousands of years and that's established. Um, by protecting your existing client base and maintaining those relationships, you are protecting your ongoing business and the referrals that are happening out there without your knowledge in many instances. Um, that management consultants should engage in online marketing and business development and if they aren't, they are behind step. Management consultants should attend where practical and possible networking events, industry briefings and seminars in order to gain potential opportunities. And I can speak from my own experiences that those, uh, those events do provide opportunities and gain work for you in, in the industry. Um, and that more primary research be conducted uh, into the outcomes of management consultants. So keep calm, it's question time. Um, thank you for all for listening. Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to, to ask of the research? Can't work with silence. <laughs> yeah, I'll go on. Please. Um, so, if I was a sole proprietor <coughs> management consultant versus a management consultancy of ten consultants and a support staff, yeah, would you suggest a similar business development strategy for both? Yeah, I, I think that question is answered by weighing it up with, with the factors that any good business owner is going to to use, and that's cost versus benefit versus time. Uh, so they've, they've got to weigh up what are the most effective methods, that, which we now know from the research, with their available time. And any sole proprietors or, or uh, single sole practitioners that are in the room in the management consulting industry will know that, that time is scarce. And uh, you've got to find the work yourself, and then you've got to do the work. When you're doing the work, you're not finding the work. When you're finding the work, you're not doing the work. And, and that's the conundrum, is finding the balance between the two. When you are finding the work, these methods that we've described through the, through the research give you an idea where your energy should be focused. Ultimately, continue online presence and growth, content creation, social media, to the right extent, coupled with networking and leveraging off existing or previous clients that you've worked with. Yeah.